Last year, I was working on this school project with some other students for a marketing class. Our assignment was to create an imaginary spokesperson for this athletic jacket our group was trying to advertise. You know, create someone who could sell the jacket in a commercial. So one of the guys in the group throws out the suggestion, how about our spokesperson be Mike on a bike, a professional cyclist. Now, our spokesperson's name didn't have to rhyme or anything, but since this one did, the other students in my group found it really funny for some reason. Then another guy in my group doubled up on the joke and suggested, how about Mike on a hike, and he's an outdoorsman. Once again, the rhyming suggestion was a real crowd pleaser. So me, being the amateur internet funny guy, I figured I could double dutch my way into this lame ass joke no problem. So I hopped my way into the conversation and said, how about Mike on a child, and he's a pedophile. Now, if we choose to look at this in the most positive way possible, at least nobody told me to leave. But if we're getting real for a second, everyone looked at me like I had just brandished a firearm. The moment I felt the word pedophile leave my lips, there was a moment of suspense, and then I was blasted by this fiery shockwave of disapproval. And in the fallout, I just had to sit there and pretend that nothing had happened, knowing full well that I could never fucking talk to these people ever again. Now, what did we learn from this story? Exactly, my behavior is borderline autistic and I make most people very uncomfortable. That Mike the pedophile story isn't a unique event for me either. I've nuked dozens of conversations in my life, so many that I eventually had to stop and ask myself, why does this keep happening to me? Why do I rub so many people the wrong way? So just like any man who's trying to better understand human interactions, I stayed up until 5 in the morning making a diagram. I wish that was a joke, but here's my actual diagram that answers a very fucking redundant question. Here's what I came up with though. I've noticed that like 90% of conversations consist of nothing more than just basic small talk. Now, unfortunately for me, I can't really do small talk because I, uh, fucking hate it. Like the idea of engaging in this almost rehearsed back and forth of, how are you doing? Good, how about you? Oh, you know, the same old, same old, ha 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 ha, isn't life great? Let's suck each other's cocks. <laughs> that shit makes my skin crawl. I'd much rather the two of us sit in silence than you burn a hole into my temple with your stupid, meaningless niceties. If we're gonna talk, then I wanna talk in the way that I actually think. Let's drop all the formalities and just treat each other like adults who can handle talking some real shit. But that comes with its own problems, because talking some real shit isn't a great icebreaker, okay? Strangers aren't exactly receptive to it. You start off a conversation talking about the funniest pornography you've seen recently, and all they hear is, Hello, I'm an alcoholic. And that desire of mine to just talk all my stupid thoughts into reality must be my issue, right? I've been living my life with no filter whatsoever, just fucking chucking comedic Hail Marys to everybody. Obviously, a few of those throws are just gonna drill some dorks in the face who can't handle a joke. So, one would think logically, if I wanted to avoid that, all I needed to do was just say my jokes to fewer people. Being more selective would decrease the chances of me accidentally blowing up a conversation. And that's a very reasonable answer. If that was my situation, but it's not. For as much as I may romanticize this idea of being some comedy bad boy who just yells the n-word at Chinese people because it's the purest form of satire, that's not really who I am. I am already very selective of who I tell jokes to because I already don't talk to anyone, like at all. 99% of my daily interactions are solved with one word answers and head nodding, yet somehow I still get into these train wreck conversations all the time. It just doesn't really add up. Until I realized that maybe me not talking to people was the problem. I mean, let's look at that Mike the pedophile situation from my classmate's perspective. Here's this guy 
who you've been working with every Saturday for eight weeks, yet you know nothing about him. He hasn't said more than a hundred words out loud in two months, and when he finally decides to speak up, the first thing he says is, Hey guys, I think our company mascot should fuck kids. What? And when I look at it like that, I can kind of see their point. What may sound to me like a cute little innocent joke about molestation could easily be misconstrued by others as just an awful nasty statement. You know, a classic case of you say tomato, I say too many Armenians live in my neighborhood. If you don't know what we're doing here, then I'm gonna kinda blindside you. And that's the answer. I rub so many people the wrong way because I catch them off guard. And it would be in my best interest if I could find a way to introduce myself to people. Without having to talk to them directly, of course. Ideally, I'd have some type of middleman who could sell people on the idea of who I am before they got to try me out. What I need is a spokesperson. Are you bored of being friends with well-adjusted adults? Tired of friends who talk to you on a regular basis? Wish your friends would make wildly inappropriate jokes for a cheap laugh? Hi, Mike the PD5 here to tell you about my good friend all ages. Normal friends are always trying to annoy you with small talk, but not all ages. Watch as he resists all urges to ask you how your day is going. Amazing! The secret is in his patented no interest in your personal life formula. Watch as he instead just spastically launches you into classic conversations like... If dogs are colorblind, does that mean you can't teach them to be racist? What's the largest thing you could fit in your butt, unassisted? People who like mint ice cream should go kill themselves. And many more! Now this is the part of the video where I would tell you that personally, I love all ages. But my attorney has advised me not to say or type that statement over the internet ever again. So instead I just tell you this, when you're bullshitting with all ages, it feels just like you're hanging out with a very troubled 13 year old boy. Now usually something that fun will cost you 27 months in the state penitentiary. But for the next 90 seconds, we're offering you an old ages friendship for the low low cost of a like on the video and subscribing to his YouTube channel. But wait, there's more! Act now and you'll be able to share this video with a friend for free. That's double the old ages for the price of one. I tell you that's double the old ages for the price of one. But if after hearing all that value, you still feel like you couldn't be friends with old ages because it sounds like an immature asshole. That's perfectly fair. All we ask is that before you judge this poor, socially retarded man, that you take a second and reflect on possible times that it was you who misread a situation or broke a social norm. Cause I know I have, and I bet you have too. Because at the end of the day, who amongst us can truly say we haven't rubbed a few people the wrong way? With the remnants of my song